Hello learners and this is a video tutorial for the graph of electric field for a solid insulating sphere of charge. So again we're going to have this positive distribution of charge throughout the sphere. And we want to let's just say that our sphere has a radius r and it's got a total charge positive q. And we want to make a graph of the electric field as a function of distance from the center. And we want to look at how that electric field changes as we get closer and closer to the edge and then outside of the sphere. So this is where we're going to utilize Gauss's law. Uh, the flux is going to be the closed area integral of E dot dA, which is going to equal how much charge you enclose over epsilon naught. And so if I look at outside of the sphere, okay, my electric field outside, well, I draw a Gaussian surface outside that sphere, and it will also be a sphere, and we end up with something like this. We've got E, and then the closed area, closed area integral of an area is just the area of that sphere, and my Q enclosed is going to be all of the charge over epsilon naught. And so the E field outside just becomes Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r squared. So that's what the E field looks like outside. Now, when the E field is, or when we're looking at inside the sphere, well, we need to draw our Gaussian surface inside. Now, this becomes a little more difficult because Q enclosed is not a constant thing. As that sphere moves further and further out, well, I enclose more and more charge. And so we can imagine that that charge is evenly distributed. So the total charge over the total volume of the sphere is going to equal Q enclosed over the volume that my Gaussian surface encloses. So here's what we've got. I've got total charge over total volume is going to equal Q enclosed over my Gaussian volume. Okay? So if I solve for Q enclosed, well, Q total is just positive Q. Volume total is 4 thirds pi R cubed, and that equals Q enclosed over the Gaussian volume, which is 4 thirds pi and little r cubed. And that little r is distance from the center to my Gaussian surface. I can cancel 4 thirds, I can cancel pi, and if I multiply over, I get q enclosed being equal to big Q little r cubed over big R cubed. Okay, so that's q enclosed. So let's utilize Gauss's law and solve for the E field. So E 4 pi r squared equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught, and Q enclosed is this. So Q enclosed would be Q little r cubed over big R cubed epsilon naught. Okay. Divide over, and your, uh, you'll have an r squared cancel that r cubed, and you divide over, and you've got E field being equal to Q over 4 pi epsilon naught r cubed, and then you've got a little r on top. So this is the E field inside. Okay, so let's take this and transcribe it so that we can see E field outside and then E field inside. Okay, so again, the blue is outside, and then the green is inside. And we had a lot of uh, discussion uh, and some discrepancies over how the graph should look. Should they meet at a point? Should one have an asymptote or not? And we can look at our functions to get the answer here. Okay, so as R increases, as R gets bigger and bigger and bigger, Okay, for outside the sphere. Well, then the E field is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. 
okay? So this is outside the sphere. So this on our graph is beyond this point. Here we're inside. And if you look, q, 4, pi, epsilon naught, and then the radius of the sphere, those are all constants. So this is just a linear function. And what about when I get to r? Do I have like an open circle and then a vertical asymptote? What do I have? Well, think about this. If you plugged in big R into this function for our little r, okay? So in other words, I'm talking at the surface of the sphere, okay? Well, if I plugged in big R, well, Q big R over 4 pi epsilon naught big R cubed, one of the R's would cancel, and it would just leave me with 1 over R squared. 1 over R squared. Whether I'm at the surface of the sphere, either function will work because either function, uh, the big R substitution, you get the same answer. If I substitute in big R here, I get Q over 4 pi epsilon naught big R squared. If I substitute in big R here, I get Q 4 pi epsilon naught 1 over R squared. So these graphs should converge at the same point. And there was a lot of disagreement about that, and I was wrong. I said that we'd have a vertical asymptote because we get closer and closer and closer and closer because I wasn't just looking at the functions themselves. So there you have it. The graphs will meet at that point at the surface because both functions work.